in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good people, I'm sure you are well. It is Friday, the fourth day of June in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2021. Today we are on the 60th day in our 40 days novena for family deliverance. And today we'll be looking at the type of bondages that families experience and go through. And there are so many of them, but I have just picked just a, a few of them that seem to be so, uh, so common in our families. And these are the bondages that we are breaking through this novena. And it's important that we note that, that um, whatever, it, whatever bondage that you are, you are in, or whichever bondage that you are in, please know, as we said the other day, that victory can only be our outcome. Bondage number one that families struggle with is the bondage of poverty. This is a state where in a family no one succeeds at all. No matter how hard they try, no one makes it to the top in the family. And you would hear people say that father, our family, we are so hardworking, but nobody has anything. We don't even see the fruit of our hard work. Not that we don't work. We work so very hard, but no, none of us would point out to anything that we have ever done. Many families are under this bondage of poverty. The devil has, has blocked their progress such that whatever they lay their hands on do not prosper at all. But today, as you engage in this deliverance novena, I want you to know that you can break this bondage for your family and your family will be able to experience deliverance in Jesus' name. It's going to happen and it will happen. And it's good that uh, we are able to know that uh, none of us was meant for, for defeat. So, are you in that bondage that you have been working very hard, but you cannot show anything out of your hard work? This is going to be broken. Bondage number two, the bondage of unfruitfulness and fruitfulness. This can also be, also be called the spirit of almost there and never there. This is when a family have been plagued with barrenness, barrenness in all areas. This is not the will of God for any family. It is not the will of God for any family to live in this state of barrenness. There are many families today that are struggling to have children because of the evil works of the devil in their lives. Barrenness is not of God. And as you pray this novena, your family shall be delivered. None of you was meant for barrenness doing a lot of work, but you can't see the fruit. I'm imagining somebody who is in the, in, the, in the family business, but you have been doing a lot of work, no fruits. Because when you talk about barrenness, barrenness is cut across the bond. And as you are saying, none of you, none of you is meant or was ever meant for that. The other one is the bondage of sin. This is when sin has taken over your family. There are so many families today where you cannot find even one person who belongs to Jesus in terms of salvation and perspective. And this is so sad. Everyone is just living a sinful life. 
and nobody cares. The devil has blocked their ears and their hearts so that they cannot hear the gospel that can save them. You realize that um, you may be in a situation where the rest of the family live in sin. And maybe there is this one person who is spiritually enlightened. And every time you try to propose to the family that there's a problem there, you become a common enemy to the rest of the family members. This is not normal. Sometimes we may want to say that, no, you know, this is how things are. And we said in week number one, the preparation that we had, that it is not godly to normalize the abnormal. So what happens if you are the only family member who can see that there is a problem? The only one enlightened. Can you do something for your family? Yes, you can do something. You can do something. Remember, their ears have been blocked by the enemy. You never know. You could be the blessings carrier of your family. Please don't give up. There are, remember, there are other families where everybody is under the bondage of sin. None at all, none is enlightened. Maybe in your family you are the only one. You have tried to tell your mother that there's a problem. She doesn't see that. Your dad, your siblings, nobody can see that. But if you have been able to find out that there's a problem somewhere, and even if they cannot listen to you, please don't allow them to, to, to get lost in the dark, in the darkness of sin. Through you and through your intercession, your family can be able to experience deliverance. And you will say, maybe it could be many years of prayer. Don't mind. In your many years of prayer, God will come through for you. From there, we look at the bondage of stagnation. The bondage of stagnation. This is when the progress of a family comes to a full stop. Literally, a full stop. When all doors become closed and no one is making progress anymore, this is another sign that the family needs serious deliverance. Nobody is now progressing. Everybody is stuck, literally stuck. And remember, this is a situation where the family was doing well, arguably. But at some point, it's like everybody now is on a downhill movement. And the situation is moving from bad to worse. And at some point now, everybody is, is stuck. You find even in some cases that the children of the family members are dropping out of school one after the other. There were some family projects that were going on. None is going on as of now. Everything has stopped. And then you realize now, as a result of this, whatever even had been amassed by the family now is taken away, either through auction or maybe the family members disposing of the properties so that they can take care of the essentials. There's a piece of lard sold, a vehicle sold, a plot or a house sold, such that the family is like on a path of self-cannibalization. The family is eating itself up, including whatever it is that they had. And from there, then you find that everybody is in darkness. Let me tell you, there is nothing as bad as stagnation because it pushes a family even to eat that which belongs to them and for tomorrow. From there, we look at the bondage of evil pattern. The bondage of evil pattern. Now, what is an evil pattern? An evil pattern is a recurrence of evil in a family from generation 
to generation. That is to say, what your great grandfathers suffered, what your great grandmothers suffered, your grandfather, your grandmother suffered, and your, self, your father suffered the same, your mother suffered the same, and now already you are in the same, same pattern. Replica of what was happening. You are there. And you ask, have we been, have we been jinxed? If you see that, that, that uh, recurrence of evil pattern, and you go back in history and you find it, and then you are seeing it, then you realize there is something wrong. My dear friend, brother and sister, you have got this glorious and gracious moment to break that tie. You do not belong to them the days of failure and stagnation and evil. Yes, your great grandparents and your grandparents and your parents may have gone through it. You have a, a chance to break that in the name of Jesus, as you all know. Uh, after that, we look at the bondage of ancestral curses. The bondage of ancestral curses. This is when the sins of your ancestors bring a curse upon your family. The sins of your ancestors bring a curse in your family. This can be very frustrating because a lot of families are suffering from what they know nothing about. And as I said the other day, ignorance or denial does not take the fact away. That is why you need to ask questions. Find out about your background and know why you are going through what you are going through. It is only after that that deliverance becomes your only path. Look back. Look at what happened. There are some families where grandparents sacrificed human blood. Some people were sacrificed, literally. And because of that, you realize that every time the children are now at the age of maturity, when girls hit the, the time of, um, of their menses, because that's the time the blood, the blood of the girl touches the ground at that point, because that's the, the moment of connection. Then you ask, how comes that all our girls have a problem only when they start their menstrual cycles? Haven't you heard of those cases whereby a certain family, girls go basak. They grow old, they grow well, up until when they get to a point of their men menstrual circles. Or the boys, when they go through their rite of passage, things now turn. Or maybe when women start giving birth. Or maybe like that. You look at the background and then you ask, what is eating us here? Maybe family members, you know, things that happen that are just out of this world. And then you ask, there could be a problem. Please look back. Look back. It is possible that what your ancestors did could be eating you today. But that cannot be your, 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 your portion. That should not define your family today. And as I have always said, you cannot remain in Jesus and at the same time remain under a curse. No. No, please. It does not work that way. No, please. Thank you. We will pick it up from there tomorrow morning and we'll be able to end or to, to conclude the part of the bondages. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Friday. Thank you.